Which is a is is the most wonderful thing, and uh, we spent time Thursday night talking about it. And nothing comforts me like knowing that I am loved by the Lord. And and it it is amazing um, that the Lord would love us the way that He does. We we studied uh, in the uh, uh, God bless you, uh, missionary um, uh, back from Tanzania. Uh, we're born. God bless you, woman of God. Woo! I got to hear about that. Souls. Devils cast out. Down in Tanzania, preaching the gospel down there. Give that woman of God a big hand. She's a, a, a real missionary. We'll go anywhere and carry that word. Amen. And see, you don't, you don't, want, you don't want to be the kind of missionary where you... You're part of church where one will go all the way to Tanzania to preach, and then you scared to preach on Tuesday night. Yeah. Right there in the multi-purpose room. <laughs> no, sir. But it is, a, it is an amazing thing to know that the Lord loves us. You, when you consider that the earth in the large scheme of things, in the, in, in the entire created universe, the earth, the earth that we live on, is actually a speck within a speck. Just a speck, a dot. The universe is so big that the earth is literally just a dot. And, and then here we are, we're dots living on this dot. And that Jesus knows the number of the hair that's on our head. That Jesus would die for us. David declared, who is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Isn't it amazing that we have the privilege to pray to the God who made everything, and that he will hear your prayer uh, uh, along with mine, and, uh, and he never gets a mix up. He won't give me your answer. And he won't give you my answer, but he's specific. Amen. And, and he watches over us. Then the Bible teaches this, that he knows our thoughts from afar. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. That he loves us and that he cares about us is is an amazing thing, but we're not to simply be in awed by it. We, we are to allow it to have its desired effect on us. See, he loves us. The love of God is to be responded to a certain way. Amen. You don't want to ignore his love. You don't want to pretend that it doesn't exist. You don't want to act like it's not worthy of, uh, of responding properly to. The Bible speaks and, and says this in, in John 3 and 18. Well, actually 17 through 19 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. Verse 16 tells us, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. That's mainly because the world was already condemned. And, uh, um, but that the world through him might be saved. And here's how you get saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. 
Why? Because he hath not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. This is the sentencing. This is the judgment. That light is coming to the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. If you do not respond properly to God's love, then the Bible says it's because you love darkness more than light. You love the club. You love you're evil. You love what you want to do. You hear it all the time. People say, well, I'm not ready to get saved yet because I don't want to give up my good times. They don't realize that that's John 3, 19. They're saying, I love what I'm doing more than I love Jesus. I'm satisfied with what I'm doing. So, and I'm not ready to give up what I'm doing. So I reject his love. I reject his death. Maybe later. I don't want it. Okay. But that says you're condemned already. And if you leave here in that state, there is no repentance beyond the grave. There are no do-overs in a situation like that. I beseech you, and we'll get happy as we go, but let me talk to you. I, 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 I implore you, accept the Lord's love. How do you do that? Practically, what, what does that mean? Get saved. Give him your heart. Amen. He created salvation for you. The Lord didn't come up with salvation because he needed salvation. And he came up with salvation because we need it. Amen. Amen. Salvation exists for us. We don't have to worship him, nor do we have to serve him to make him God. He was God before I was born. He'll be God when I'm dead and gone. He was God before any of us were thought about. He's God. And you know, he has various ways to show that he's God. The other day they were talking about the Bible. The Bible. The Bible, the most controversial, the most burned, the most hated book in existence, and yet always the best-selling, most popular, and most read book in existence. When you read that a book is a New York Times bestseller, Read what's not written. What's not written beside each book that becomes a bestseller are the words except for the Bible. No book outsells the Bible. Why is it that the Bible outsells all books? Even though the Bible may be burned. We're praying for you, Sister Little. She laid her dad to rest. Praying for you and love you. God bless and keep you. It may be burned. It may be resisted. People may call it an old book. They can say whatever they want. But the reason why it outpaces all books is because the word of God is quick. Living and sharper than any two-edged sword because this is God's love letter. The Bible is God's love letter to mankind. Isn't it, isn't it amazing that he would love us so much to write us a letter? Praise the Lord. God didn't send us a text. The Lord wrote a letter. And a detailed letter saying, I love you. Praise the Lord. And, and, and even with all of the problems of the last day church, after he lays out 
the litany of things that's wrong with the last day church. He says to the church, let me tell you why I'm rebuking you. Let me tell you why I'm chastising you. Chastisement is, is rebuke or it is, uh, uh, it is rebuke for the purpose or criticism for the purpose of instructing. I've criticized you. I've, 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 I've rebuked you. I've, 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 uh, I've checked you so that I can instruct you. Chastisement is God checking us, shaking us to get our attention, to show us the error of our ways so he can show us a better way. A friend would do that for a friend. I'll show you some things in the Bible in a minute. You know, sometimes when you see somebody going off, you got to check them. You got to get their attention. Sometimes you got to hurt their feelings. Sometimes the check is not uh, pleasant, but it brings them back to reality. And then you say, now here's what you need to do. And it may not be pleasing at the time. It may not be, you may not feel good about it, but it blesses you. That's what the Bible does. Lord says in our text, whom I love. I'll tell you something that's interesting before I uh, uh, move any further. When, when I read the word love, uh, honey, I just assumed he was talking about agapo, agape love, that benevolent love, agape love. The, the agape uh, is it, a religious love. It is a benevolent love. When it says God so loved the world, that was agape Agape love. God loved us so much that he died for us. When you exercise agape love, that is the kind of love It's benevolent. That means you do what is best for the person that you love, whomever the object of your affection is. You do what's best for them rather than what they want you to do. Agape. See, what they want you, they may want you to express your love one way, but if you know that that's not best for them, agape love says, no, I'm going to do what's best. It's agape when the parent says to the child, you can't have any more candy. That's right. That's right. That's right. But I want some. You know that it's bad for their teeth, bad for their health, and you don't want them to grow up to be little diabetics by the time they're three. So you, you curve that. Child may stick their lips out, but when, when you're walking in agape, parents aren't saying amen now because you done lost your agape will. <laughs> Say amen. amen. That's the problem, see? But when you walk in agape, you do what you know is best. <laughs> amen. Now, that's, that's a powerful form of love. But that, interestingly enough, is not the love here. Love here, oddly enough, is filial. And filial love is love that, uh, is love that a man had for a woman. It's love that one friend has toward another. It's, it's love, that, listen to this, that is the result of having common interests, of having things in common. Now, what is the significance of it? God loved Loves us, of course, with the agape love. But the reason he uses philia here is that at one point, the Laodicean church and Jesus Christ walked in lockstep. They had things in common. But mother, over time, the church veered away from the Lord. See, and that, that commonality that once was there Praise the Lord, was no longer there. And Jesus is, was, is trying to, with the last day church, bring that commonality back. See, the last day church is a church given to idolatry. We want to bring the world in. We want to be like this group and that group. We want just about, we want to reinvent ourselves almost every Sunday and be everything except what God has called us to be. We don't want to offend anybody. We want to be a church that is more influenced by the world than we influence the world. And the world, my friends, is in big trouble. 
I was watching the other day, and the latest, and I don't know, it's, it's a mess, and yes, I'm saying something about it, uh, Sue Bird, she's the latest woman to come out uh, as a lesbian in the WNBA, which is a lesbian league. One girl, uh, uh, one former player set up to 98, 90, uh, in the high 90s, that she is up there, no, so now, look at it. She's what you call a lipstick lesbian. Now, I can talk about it because she said it. She said it publicly. Lipstick is you try to be girly, but you're still that. Right. See, the coaches are in on it. Uh -huh. The players are in on it. Right. Oh, my. It's, it's not good. It's not good. There's a spirit. There's a spirit. <laughs> Title IX. Title IX. And I'm not against, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm for equal, I'm for, I'm, I, look, I'm black. So I'm for equal opportunity. Say amen. amen. But that Title IX has been one of the greatest doorways for pushing the lesbian LGBT agenda like nothing has never before. Because for these women to get to where they need to be, the, the, the training and stuff, we were talking about at 8 o'clock class, you got to almost teach them to be men. They got to reach beyond their femininity. Listen, listen to the, the, the instructions the coach give. You talk to them like you're talking to fellas because you're trying to bring out a level of aggression that's not a part of estrogen. That, that aggression comes from testosterone. Don't get me started. And what happens is, what happens is, when you get in there, and anytime you get into anything that's 90 some percent wicked, you got to be, well, you are sitting up for that wickedness to, have, to affect you. Well, how do you know? Because the Bible says so. Now, y'all hang around and listen to this now because you are not going to hear it anywhere else. The Bible teaches that Lot's righteous soul was vexed just by seeing the day-to-day -day behavior of the wicked in Sodom and Gomorrah. What was the effect of that irritation on Lot. Lot's daughters married homosexual men. Lot's wife, her heart was so messed up that she looked more to the past than she did to the future. And God said to her, said to them, the angel said, when I bring you out of this city, all you got to do to be delivered is to, don't, to not look back. Do you know she looked back? And became a pillar of salt. But let me tell you who was to blame for Lot's wife's destruction. Uh, the daughters was so messed up morally that they got their daddy drunk when they, when they escaped the city and had sex with him, incest, and got pregnant and, and, uh, for their daddy. You know who was responsible for the whole family being messed up? Lot. Because he brought them down there. He knew it was a wicked place and he kept them there. He did that. He killed his wife, she became a pillar of smoke and uh, assault, and his daughters got messed up. Because right. a girl, a girl's mind is messed up when she's married to a man who don't want her. And especially if he don't want her, but he wants another man. Lot's wife, daughters were married. Lot had two sons in law and the Bible says that Lot said that his daughters even though married had never known a man that's Bible so you mad you mad once you get married you expect you know hey oh hey that's some things that's some things am I right preacher that's some things and then all of a sudden, uh, honey, honey, honey. Uh, I, the, the first night, it's a headache. Uh, the second night, it's, my throat's bothering me. 
Third night, oh my, I stubbed my toe. The next night, knees bother. After a while, it dawned on them girls. He don't want me. And you know he wasn't, you know he wasn't nice to her. They weren't nice to him because they wanted to be there. Any man who wants to receive when God made him to give is upset with the woman who was naturally made to receive. So he's mad because he can't be her. Give me a big round of applause. It's a messed up world. So, so, so the church has to speak to these things. To try to save your sons and daughters. Because, listen, now Jesus didn't say, go into all kinds of evil and I'll keep you. No, he says, he says, pray this, deliver us from evil. You're asking for trouble. Well, I can do it, and it won't affect me. It affected everybody else. You're saved now, but the Lord have called you to go. You're you delivered from drugs, but the Lord have called you to go back into the crack house to deliver those who are in it. Everybody knows it's just a matter of time. Just a matter of time before you go in and not come out. No, no, no. If the Lord, bring, if the Lord have brought you out, don't you ever go back there. Don't go back. Go, don't do no, no, sir. No, sir. That's your lion in the cage. That's that thing. You, oh, you might be strong the first day. Right. Round about that third day. Oh, Lord, you. That won't be a fourth day because you won't. You won't leave. You got to know how to stay delivered. Even though the church was silent on these issues, let me speed up because you all. Don't, don't, you don't like what I'm saying today. Even though the church was silent on these issues, Jesus said, I'm saying some harsh things to you, like some of you, you're upset now. Jesus says, but I love you. I'm saying it to you because I love you. We once had common interests. We were once walking philia. We had things in common. I love you. I'm trying to bring you back to where we were. I want us to, I want us to get our commonality back. Now, because Jesus, Jesus said, now I can't go where you are because you are wrong. See, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. We can't be common. We can't have common interests in, in the condition if we move to your position because your position lay out of sin in church. Church is the bride of Christ. Your position, honey, is wrong. So what I'm trying to do is get you back to where we were when, when, you, when, when we were right. Because when we were right, you were standing with me, and, and I'm the Lord, and I'm right. I, I need you back over here. See, Philia, common interest. We got to we got to get right with God. That's good preaching right there. I, 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 listen, I, I can wrap it up and see when we when we're getting right with God, then we respond to Him properly. Part of the story, the Bible speaks to the the creation's response or lack of response to the Creator's love. Will you all give me just a few moments? 1 John chapter 4. I study this stuff. And verse 12 says this. I'm, ta I'm talking about responding to him and how the creator's love also affects the way we treat each other. Uh, that's what I'm going to talk about right now, how we treat each other. Because you really can't love the Lord now and not love each other. 
All right, let's see here. First John chapter 4, verse 12 says, No man have seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is made perfect in us. Now, I dealt with this particular passage Thursday night. That is, his love reaches its ultimate fulfillment in us. See, the love of God is to be expressed in the way we love each other. And, and let me tell you, it's not simply in the way we love people who are easy to love. God put some difficult folk to love in your path intentionally so that your love can grow and be perfected. All of us love to be around folk who are easy for us to love. Oh yeah, this person is easy to love. But let me tell you something. Everybody, Tom, is easy to love to somebody, but everybody is hard to love to someone else. See, none of us are Mr. Congeniality where everybody just thinks you're just so wonderful. Praise the Lord. All of us have people who find us to be easy to love and people who find us to be hard to love. Me, yes, you. Well, what, what, would, what, what is it about me that someone would uh, struggle with? Just ask them. They'll tell you. All of us have our ways, praise the Lord, and we have our shortcomings. Dr. Ajinga, we all have our idiosyncrasies. So one of the ways that God grows us is that he put people in our path. Because Jesus didn't just love Mary and John and those who stood at the foot of the cross who were weeping for him. Jesus loved those who, was, who said crucify him. Jesus loved the soldier who stabbed him in the side. Jesus loved both criminals who were hanging on the cross. Jesus loved those soldiers who blindfolded him and hit him. Jesus loved the soldiers who spit upon him. See, the love of God helps us as we love through difficult situations. But most of us never reach that place because when we run into folk that we, who we find difficult, we just avoid them. We just work around them. We just don't say amen like you all are not saying amen now. We just let it go. When the truth is, that's the person that God wants to grow you through. Yeah, I put them there. That's not, you know, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Say the Lord rebuke you. The reason why they had moved is not the devil. The Lord placed them there to help you get over yourself. Thank you for watching God First with Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. and the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. To experience this message in its entirety, call 877-463-3477 to purchase a DVD or CD. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God first day.